Hello, welcome to Matters of Decorum. I'm Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. Might be reinventing the wheel just a little bit today, but the, a concept's been dancing around to the back of my head, and I figured I'd see if I couldn't get it out there uh, a little bit. Because uh, I'm thinking of, of uh, a high magic, high fantasy campaign in D&D. And when I think of high magic campaigns, uh, one place my brain goes to is the Eberron background. Uh, that, that's a great setting. Uh, lots of good high magic. A lot of things that I really like, the Artificer class and Warforged. And uh, there's a, 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 the, the, the Dragon Shards. There, there's a lot of good stuff in Eberron. But one of the things, almost a throwaway concept that uh, really appeals to me, uh, is a background type of character, an NPC called a Mage Rite. Mage rites are not fully trained mages. They don't know very much. They know a cantrip at most. Uh, and they make their living going around casting this cantrip. Uh, cantrips are at-will spells. So if you know one, uh, you can just keep casting it once a turn if that's your choice to do. And uh, a lot of cantrips have a certain amount of utility to them. So someone, a craftsperson or someone just trained in a single spell uh, can make a pretty good living going around and using uh, that one spell that, as a utility for people. Uh, a prestidigitation strikes me as one of the uh, a cantrip that would be very popular for a mage writer. Or light, you're making something glow for an hour, but an hour of, uh, of having something illuminated uh, can be really handy in an urban environment. Um, all, uh, lots of different possibilities. I'll, I will get to that part. Uh, it strikes me that a mage right makes a really good background. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, balancey, uh, issuey because backgrounds in general, uh, as a rule, uh, you get a certain amount of information about uh, what the background uh, is and how folks get that. Uh, they have uh, some skill proficiencies, tool proficiencies, equipment, and a special feature. Uh, that special feature usually has some social um, connections for people of that background or some specialized area of knowledge, like being able to navigate a city better, being able to find lodging under certain circumstances, having a group of people that give you hospitality when you need it. Uh, so this is going to bend some of those a little bit, but I kind of like that because this strikes me as a, a fairly integral part of a high fantasy society, actually. Learning spells in D&D is kind of, well, do you have a class that teaches you spells? Do you have a, or did you pick up a feat? that gives you a few extra spells. How do you get extra spells? Uh, how do you learn that? What is the, the, the person on the street going to do? Uh, they, they, they've got a kid. They want to see if they can make it to a magical academy because mag mag wizards make crazy cash after a certain while. So how do you find out? In the setting that I am contemplating, the, the no names this is just the bare bones, that all I've got set in is that it's high fantasy and I want mage rights to be a background in it. So let's take wizard schools. Let's take schools of magic, magical academies. How do they know that person that they're going to train can actually use magic? Is there a gift associated with magic? Is there a talent? Can anyone pick it up if they study enough? Is any baseline person with the bare requirements of their stats, able to cast that spell if you just train them hard enough? What if you need that little extra spark of magic in your soul? Elves start with a cantrip, uh, one or two. So there's, there's something magical about elves. They've got a little extra something. They all have at least a little bit of magic they can throw. Maybe not every human dwarf gnome, maybe not every race that doesn't get a cantrip or something similar as they are uh, just in generation, uh, maybe they don't have the spark. How do you find out? 
enter the Mage Rite Trials or a Mage Rite School. You can take an extra class after school. Uh, after your regular classes, after you're done with stuff, you go see the wizard who does the Mage Rite training. And all they're doing is trying to teach the students in their A cantrip. You get to choose which cantrip you want to learn. There's a lot of, uh, again, Presto is going to be one of the big, big ticket items. Lots of people are going to be wanting that. Cast light. Someone might want to cast Firebolt. Firebolt has some utility purposes as well. It'd be bad for lighting hearth fires with because there's a certain amount of just damage done. Uh, you're not simply, ig Presto will simply ignite something. Firebolt will blow something up and light it on fire which does have utility uses. So uh, I'll, I'll go through the cantrip list and see uh, which ones I think are best for uh, for a mage right. But, so you pick a cantrip that you want to learn. You know, if it does a lot of damage, you might need a special waiver from the principal or a note from your parents. And the wizard tries to teach it. If you can pick up the cantrip, two things have happened. One. You're a mage right. Congratulations. Uh, you now get a certificate that says you can cast this spell and you have the permission of the Mage's Guild to do so as long as you're doing it in a business environment. And you can be hired by any of a number of firms that keep and retain a number of mage rights to just perform little services. Uh, and on top of that, a mage right doesn't have to go through a certain amount of extra testing if they want to go into the Magical Academy. We know you can learn magic. We know not only do you have the gift, but you got the dedication to learn a cantrip. We'll absolutely bring you in and try and teach you some more for a fee. A large fee. But you will be earning a lot down the line. I imagine that varies from municipality to munici municipality. Uh, some Kingdoms are going to, well, we'll have them pay for their education uh, a, a certain amount to show that they've got the right dedication, to show that they've got the resources, because at some point, wizards can earn titles, and you don't just want anybody to have a title. But if they can afford the education, their family can probably swing the title. I imagine other nations are, well, we're going to need wizards for our army, uh, not just to be on the front lines, but to act in support and utility. And so if you're going to join the Wizards Academy, there is a fee or you can sign up for a certain amount of military service as a battle wizard or utility wizard for the uh, for the armies. And we will cover your education for you. Uh, any number of things like that. Uh, a Wizards uh, Academy for a place that's got a really good magic users guild might uh, that the guild might find choice people do a little divination oh this person has a high magic future this this person is not going to amount to terribly much but those folks that have uh that that do high on the divinity or the divine divination index divination index i like that those people who score high on the divination index they can get financial aid they might not even have to pay if they get score high enough uh, good destiny, bad destiny, destiny, fate. Are they going to be good? Are they going to be evil? They're they're going to be big. We want a piece of that. We'll we'll cover their training. Even evil evil wizards fit into guilds. So, uh, you get what, what do you get as mage right? What's the what's the background? Skill proficiencies, we're going to cut down on the skill proficiencies. We need to balance that cantrip no matter how we do it. So uh, normally there's a couple of skill proficiencies with the background. We're going to do one, Arcana. You get proficiency in Arcana if you're trained as a mage, right? Because there's a no small amount of education that goes into that. You're there after class for a semester or so, at the end of which you know a cantrip and a little bit about how magic works and how it's taught. Arcana, uh, tool proficiencies. I'm tempted to, to remove that entirely as well, uh, because uh, the, the, the cantrip is going to make up for an awful lot of this, but 
there's usually a couple of tool proficiencies here. And I'm going to, let's, let's cut that back one. Let's do one tool proficiency. Uh, tool proficiency of choice. One tool proficiency of the player's choice. Uh, because mage rights do their stuff not necessarily in a vacuum. They use that in conjunction with something else. You have learned a cantrip, and now you're going out and doing something with it. Maybe thieves' tools. Maybe your tinkerer's tools. Uh, you're auguring towards artificer, and and well, you know presto, and how to use tinkerer's tools. And that's a really or mage hand and a tinkerer's tools. And you are well on your way to being a a nice, balanced, practiced artificer. Um, or cooking tools, presto and cooking tools, and you can add a little magical flavor to absolutely everything you make is going to make you a better chef down the line. So, one tool proficiency of your choice. Equipment. Do we want to, again, um, you don't need an arcane focus to throw cantrips. Cantrips are things that just come off your head. Uh, if you just wave your hand or snap your fingers, say some words, and boom, cantrip happens. It's not something that really requires the arcane focus. The cantrip itself kind of counts as a tool. Um, but the mage right, if you learn that early, let's say you learn your cantrip out of junior high, you got a job through high school. During the day, you're going to school, but you know, after school, you can go work a few hours as a mage, right? Go go to the guild hall, get sent out someplace to go light up an area for a workman for an hour, or go flavor some stuff for a cook, or maybe you're going to mend things all day long for a for a seamstress or, or a carpenter. You're just cast to mend right and left, and that's going to get you some cash. So the gold pouch with 15 gold in it, absolutely. By the, by the time you have starting as a first level character, yeah, yeah, Mage Rights got a little saved up. 15 gold is not a bad little savings. Um, what else would they have? Set of professional clothes. Um, set of professional clothes, a pouch with 15 gold, and a Mage Rights certificate. That that's about all they're really going to need as far as equipment, um, and then it's what's their cantrip? What do they know? What what's their specialization? Yeah, proficiency in arcana, a tool proficiency of their choice, pouch with fifteen gold, professional clothing, and their certificate. Everything else is they get a cantrip. I take that background. I, I I can see a number of my characters taking that background. There are feats that give you more magic and or more cantrips, and but nah. A a mage right one cantrip, and let's say you've got a a, a another class feature that you have professional connections in the city. Uh. You you are part of a guild structure. You can go to a guild and get work. You can go to a guild and get work, and because you're a member of a guild, you can get housing from the guild. Uh, they'll they'll put you up in a common room and give you a bowl of uh, food uh, anytime you need it. Guild membership has its privileges. You have paid. <laughs> oh, pardon me. You've paid your dues. You've paid your dues, and now you're a magic-using professional, even if you are just a mage right. Mage right's a, a path to an upper class. You, you are a specially talented and skilled tradesman. So let's, let's look at what those cantrips might be used for professionally. Uh, a cantrip from the uh, wizard's spell list. Um, because those are the most scholarly spells. Those are the spells that are meant to be gained through study. So let's let's look at the wizard's spell list at the cantrips to see which ones we think will uh, will work. Acid splash. 
Okay, again, with a special dispensation, you, you, okay, know from your principal, you learned asset split. You're, you can, you are stable enough, and we trust this person enough to teach you spells that do damage. Acid splash, yeah, there's, you could use that for disposal. Uh, there's, uh, you know, burn up garbage or, or, uh, take out stuff that is toxic or, or otherwise undesirable. You don't just want to, to incinerate it someplace. It needs to be melted down and, uh, and destroyed. It's a D6 of damage, but, you know, maybe wasp nest. A wasp nest or, or, or exterminators could use that. You'd, you'd stand a chance doing a little property damage, but in, if you target it right, you're going to be fine. Get get right in there. Take a moment. Now, you don't got to do this in combat. It's like, okay, there's wasps over there. It gets maximum range. Take out the wasp nest. It it burns. It melts. The wasps inside are our, our, our history, as as are their their progeny and the nest itself. There's a little residue to sweep up, and you probably have a dust bin for doing it or dustpan for doing just that. That that's uh, blade ward. The the until your next turn combat kind of cantrips aren't going to be as useful for this because. No one's going to have you standing next to them telling you to cast Blade Ward on me and while you're uh, in... Uh, no, maybe you are. Being the guy behind the paladin or knight, uh, the, the, the lord hires a, a Blade Ward mage right to stand behind him in comp... Okay, yeah, Blade Ward has its uses. Uh, you're, it's it's high risk, high reward. You are going into this specifically to be a utility defense caster for someone who's going to be ostensibly in the front lines taking the blows, and you're going to be right there behind them on the front lines throwing this as often as you got to, making sure that that stays active for them. Blade Ward, touch or self? Uh, that is a question. I'm going to be doing a little referencing here uh, because if it's touch, then that that scenario works. If it is self, uh, then now nah, we're we're just not going to include. Uh, we're we're not going to consider that too much. Uh, range self. Uh, yeah, that is just for you. If you could do it on someone else, maybe, but nah. Uh, I can't picture a profession you could engage in where Blade Ward would be handy as it is written. That short amount of defense and the fact you have to, every six seconds, you have to cast it again. Even if you're using it to blunt instruments so you didn't cut yourself while you were crafting, it'd be a distraction every six seconds to have to recast it. Nah. Nah, Blade Ward's not that you chill touch, though. Oh, chill touch. Uh, yeah, it does a little bit of damage, but... Being able to chill things down and get things, it is more energy efficient to heat things up than it is to cool things down in any given society. People do like cold drinks, though. And yeah, you're doing a little bit of damage, but putting your hand in a, uh, a big container of water to maybe get some ice on the top or and slowing things down as well. Yeah, Chill Touch has a lot, has, has a number of uses, some utility stuff. Dancing Lights, so entertainment, absolutely. Dancing Lights is a great cantrip and all, has a lot of uses. Uh, you could illuminate things for a little while or just make fluffy, funny illusions. They have children's shows or clowns, uh, a bard with Dancing Lights, uh, or training to be a bard once you know Dancing Lights. You've got a little extra flair, some pizzazz. Firebolt, yeah. Uh, again, it's going to have some limited use in utility circles, but uh, you use fire on a farm. Uh, burning the old crops, getting rid of uh, uh, of organic waste, uh, exterminated gophers. Oh my god, having having firebolt, firebolt and a gopher problem means pretty soon you only have firebolt. Friends. 
Friends is a little tricky because people know if they had a cast on them, but Friends for a relationship counselor would be awesome. It's like, okay, I'm going to throw a little magic, and for a little bit, you're going to be a little bit friendlier for each other. It's okay. Uh, this, you're, you're, There's a little influence here, but you don't got to treat me any better. I just want you two to see what it would be like if you were just a little nicer to each other. Do I have consent? Okay, let's cast friends. I can see that being useful in a number of situations. That's certainly one. And then you go out to be a negotiator, a bard, someone who deals with people, and yeah, you know friends, but like, can, can we start this off on the right foot? You also get a little ethical training uh, doing it that way, which I know some D&D characters who could use a little ethical training. Light. It lasts an hour. So it's light that lasts an hour, but if you're walking through a dark city and there's somebody with a cart, he's got a collection of lovely little pebbles, and you might pay a couple of coppers for a pebble, but you'd pay two or three silver for a pebble that gives you a good source of illumination for an hour. Walking through a dark part of the city, you're you're doing work. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get behind this couch to do some upholstery, but it's dark down there and you want to see what you're doing. A light spell. A, a mage right who knows light can absolutely find a plenty of work. And if you're, if you're right there in the craftsman's guild and someone's, well, I, I got to go do a night job and I got some carpentry to do. I really need to be able to, uh, can I, can I get a, a light right? A mage right with light? Uh, anyone. Get their pocket full of pebbles, and yep, yep, I'm, um, I'm on that. I got you. And just making sure that there is a light source there, a non-smoking, non-heat producing source of light that you can put next to flat. Oh, alchemists would be all over that. There's someone who is just there to make sure that there is light, safe light for what they are doing. That's not going to ignite what they're working on. Oh yeah, yeah, that's mage hand. Oh gosh, yeah, Mage Hand is one of those super useful utility spells. Uh, yeah, you're not lifting a lot with Mage Hand, but you got reach with Mage Hand. Getting stuff off the top shelf. Being able to sort and organize books on the top shelf. Folks with Mage Hand are going to be up there. And working next to a librarian who's going to be saying, put this here, bring me that so I can see what it is. Stack these up in order. Uh, that's going to be, especially the arcana training, so they know a little bit about how to handle research materials and books. Oh, got a sage who is a mage hand mage right. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Mending. All day, every day. One of the, uh, that's going to be up there is one of the most common mage rights. Just the city hires you. Here's Here's a stipend, uh, a weekly fee. While you wander around the city, find things that belong to the city that are a little broken up. And if you can mend it with your cantrip, mend it with your cantrip. And if you can't, write us a little note so that we know we need to send someone out to fix it. And then head out with the crew to go fix stuff and take care of the little stuff for them so that they're not worried about every little crack or break in stuff. They're not worried about that street sign that's gotten a little worn, you just mend that. And they'll handle the big stuff, and you'll get your salary. Yeah. Uh, or a tradesman, you go out, go out with that carpenter. You and, the, you and the light mage, right? Go out with the carpenter, he's providing light, and you are making sure that everything... Uh, ah, man, this did... My, my, my hammer is starting to get a little bit... Here, let me fix the hammer. And that thing over there, uh, you don't need to worry about that. I got this. Uh, carpenter could do a lot. anything that makes uh, that helps someone get more work done more quickly. Oh yeah, mending right up there, top of the list. Message courier. Uh, you could you could function as a very effective courier with message, uh, or helping someone in a uh, you could work for a diplomatic corps or just a, a maybe a police department trying to. Get coordination happening. I don't want to have to move from my desk all the way out there to get messages to people, especially in an emergency situation. Having a message mage right, right there to pass stuff 
quickly, cleanly, without trace in the between. Certain amount of security there. You could end up in a good position in a military or a, an espionage branch or even a dipl diplomatic corps or perhaps all three. That's a good one. Minor illusion. Oh, entertainer. Uh, yeah, you're, you're an entertainer or someone is trying to describe something. Police sketch artist. Uh, you could work that way. If, if your cool proficiency is, say, drawing tools, you could draw that minor illusion and, okay, what did they look like? What what was their general makeup? Are their eyes closer together or not? How Are, are their lips thin enough? And, and you get a likeness. Yeah, take that likeness you generated by interactively working with a witness, get that, that likeness drawn down, and now you've got your wanted poster. Uh, oh, man, that's... And that's just one use. Uh, again, entertainers, or uh, you could... A restaurant could hire someone with mi a minor illusion to... Uh, well, we don't, we're not going to bring out the dessert tray, but this is what the desserts look like right now. Uh, Miguel will show you the entree. And the, you, you take Miguel, beginning of the night, you serve him the chef special. And then for the rest of the night, he can give people a view of the chef special that smells like the chef's special. That'll sell some food. Yeah. Yeah, uh, again, and that, that's another one of those. It's going to be a high, high on the list. Poison spray. Exterminator. Again, we go to the wasp nest. A little bit less property destruction involved in that. Um, again, you can fire bolt gophers or you can hit them with poison spray, and it's a little bit less traumatic for uh, as far as burning the soil. And the poison's not going to last. It's a cantrip. It's there for the duration that it's there, and then it's gone. No residue toxic exterminating. That is useful enough that, yeah, yeah, that I can see that being an option. Again, you get the dispensation from the principal. Yeah, they're responsible enough to have this cantrip. Go ahead and teach it to them. Prestidigitation is my favorite cantrip uh, in the entire list. Uh, favorite enough that it's worth it for me to go and have a, a look and maybe read a little bit of it because Presto does a number of things and uh, that's going to make it one of those things that yeah yeah well I don't know what I should learn uh, I uh, I get a choice that's in me I don't know enough about magic what what should I learn well, what what do you want to do well, I, I I don't know we'll teach a Presto digitation then you've got choices to make. Um, you know, create instantaneous harmless sensory effect, such as a shower of sparks, a puff of wind, uh, first, a uh, faint music notes, or an odd odor. There is a spell I created in uh, the victory system called Ooh Sparkly. Uh, it is a cantrip. It is a very minor spell. It creates a shower of fanciful sparks. That is all it does. It, it has no combat effect. It, it, there's, there's no penalties to anyone's roles. You create a shower of sparks. That is how magic users show that they are magic users. Like, ooh, sparkly, and oh, oh, he knows magic. Fact, I better be careful. So I, I kind of get that, if, that idea. You can certainly do it in effect. Uh, well, they, they said you're a mage, right? Can you show me something so I know? Oh, yeah. Poof. Oh, oh, yeah. He's, he's, he got magic. We can do this. Um, Instantaneously light or snuff out a candle, a torch, or a small campfire. If you've got, say, a gaslight situation in a city, a mage right walking along, just using Presto to light all of the lanterns, that two or three, you know, one per street, uh, it's, and they can get that covered really fast, faster than someone carrying an open flame on the street. Uh, or walking from tavern to tavern, lighting their hearth fires for them at, uh, around dusk. Uh, there's a candle snuffer, uh, a number of really, really useful uses just for that. The ability to create or remove small fires without flint or tinder, 
you know, you're walking to a place that's they got 50 candles. It's like, well, okay, it's going to take me a five, six minutes, but I got this. Um, instantaneously clean or soil an object no larger than one cubic foot. Most articles of clothing can get packed into one cubic foot. I clean his shirt. I clean his pants. I clean his boots. Uh, I clean this bucket of jewelry. I clean one square foot, one cubic foot of that wall over and over and over again. Someone who knows clean and someone who knows mending go someplace. Uh, they can restore a bill, uh, restore a small cottage overnight. If, if the carpenter's got their cottage restored, man, this is going to be, they're going to take me a while. The, 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 the cleaning and minor repair jobs are going to take me most of the time. Two mage rights. Yeah. You drop the coin to get two mage rights back there working up. You're working on the big stuff, making sure the furniture's everything. Everyone there making sure the walls are clean and uh the, the the curtains are are all stitched up and repaired, everything looks nice. And now you have you have done a week of work in a night, and you have earned uh, a pretty penny for that because you did that work fast. I need this cottage done tomorrow. I didn't know people were going to show up. What can I do? Well, he called this guy. He works with mage rights. He's fast. He costs a little bit more, but it'll be done in time. Uh, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, so, yeah, another uh, chill, warm, or flavor up to one cubic foot of non-living material for one hour. As the soup goes out of the kitchen, the mage right. Make sure it tastes great. This is going to, and you know, we don't have the money for really good ingredients at this restaurant. Uh, the the seasonings to do this rare stuff, saffron, things like that, things that are really rare. Uh, we we just if we put that into every dish, we'd have to charge five times as much. No one would come and pay for our food. But. I make a perfect bowl as I put effort in. I make one perfect bowl of stew. I make a bowl of stew <laughs> with the most expensive ingredients and the most expensive seasonings. And yeah, that's going to put me out a bowl of stew. And that bowl of stew, I feed to a mage right who knows prestidigitation. It's like, I want you to savor this bowl of stew. Eat it nice and slow. Here's some water to wash it down with so that nothing's interfering with the taste. Here's a nice neutral bread to clear your palate between bites so that you can get all of the nuance of the flavor. You got it? Can you describe it to me? Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. Now, every bowl of stew that comes out of this kitchen, I want to taste like that. Now, I can make a decent stew. I can make a mediocre stew. I'm not going to make a bad stew because I don't want people to get sick, but I make stew that will absolutely do. And, you know, I can make it textured correctly. It's got chunks of something that could be the meat you're looking for in it. And some, some potatoes because potatoes are nice and cheap and you can get them in a, in, in bulk and you make a passable stew, but every bowl of that passable stew that goes out tastes like the best stew you could ever possibly make, and you can charge half of what someone would charge for that stew if you made it with all the correct ingredients. How do I do it? A little bit of magic. What do you think? That made right one. They're they're never paying for a meal again because they can just show up at this place and yeah, the the restaurant gets more success the more wonderful meals they feed the mage right you're gonna be careful controlling your weight at that rate aren't you but you know a gustatorial mage right with prestidigitation that'll go far uh and not to mention the chilling and warming thing it, it, all the drinks are, are, are cold or warm uh, the, the the water's cold the beer is cold the coffee is warm that cocoa Right temperature every time. Um, a good restaurant might have two or three mage rights that just no presto. 
someone who knows mending to handle, make sure all the pots and pans and, and ladles and whatnot stay in good condition. That'd be a, a fancy restaurant. You're paying for three mage rights, but mage rights, they're, again, these are folks that are maybe, they're going to high school during the day. That, at night, they come, they work the restaurant. They're just throwing their, their, their magic over and over again. So you don't got to pay them full price because they're still technically apprentices. Uh, the, the Mage Rights Guild is going to insist they have a certain amount of pay because they're getting a cut of it. But it's it's not what you're paying for the ingredients or someone to be on site tinkering and 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 repairing your stuff uh, with without magic. This is a fascinating economy in this place. Just thinking about that. Um, make a color, small mark, or symbol appear on an object, a surface for one hour. Uh, Little love notes, or you know, you include emojis on stuff. Uh, I need a secret sign on this wall for an hour. Go to this place and make this advertisement. Entertainers, uh, do the sigil of the entertainer on this wall. As hey, you're making marks on the wall. It's okay. It's going to be gone in an hour. It's good. It's, it's not graffiti. It's advertisement. I've, I've got a. Uh, I've got a writ from the from the guild. That works. Yeah, that, that's... And you can create a non-magical trinket or an illusory image that can fit in your hand that lasts until the end of your next turn. Just a little something. Just a little trinket. Uh, a jeweler could hire one to demo pieces. for. A jeweler might not want to put their very expensive rings and bracelets out in front of a public that has rogues in it who might want to take them. But... You have a mage right behind the counter. Maybe you're, maybe you hire a mage right with presto, uh, minor illusion or presto as your salesperson. It's like, well, I'm looking for something like this. Well, we have a ring that looks like this. What do you think? You can't steal that. Or if you could slide a hand that out of the mage right's hand, it stops existing. It's, it's not there anymore. It's, it's, it's just a bit of magic. That's super useful. Uh, the, or you go to a tinkers or artificers guild. It's like, I need something that has these qualities, a little piece. If I could just see it, I mean, it looks something like this. Yeah. Yeah. And they could fake sleight of hand all day long. So they could also get a little work as an entertainer, children's parties. They would, yeah, they got, Presto does give you more than one trick. That's just in the repertoire for that. Yeah, Presto required a little special attention, but that, that's... Most most mage rights would probably end up learning that just because it's got so many different uses. Um, Ray of Frost, again, chilling things down, slowing them down. Uh, exterminating with Ray of Frost. That would have some longer-ranging consequences, wouldn't it? You know, like like burning the field, Ray of Frost would freeze the field, but you might have crops that respond well to that. Uh, and you would rather Ray of Frost a wasp nest than Firebolt a wasp nest, because those are awesome built on your house. Your house is going to survive a little bit of cold. It's not going to survive being lit on fire. Shocking grasp. Bodyguarding, maybe? Um... Self-defense or, or defense of someone next to you. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a mage right with a martial bent might learn something like that. I'd, I'd like to be able to handle myself in a fight. Uh, have a little something extra just in case. Uh, animal handler. Help out with uh, well, a, a circus from which the cruelty has not yet been removed. Or a zoo that might have an emergency situation or two. Maybe if you just shock that animal to get back in the cage as opposed to... to uh, Knocking it out or trying to force it in with pikes or a, or a man catcher. Not, not as useful lower on the tier list, but a uh, true strike. I can see true strike having its uses. Again, that person standing behind someone on the battlefield, making sure that that spell goes off or that their, their strike hits just every single time is in. Is that's. Uh, true strike. 
uh, range 30 feet. So, Kirk's defense is, nah, that, that's for, it, it, is, it is for self. So, it'd be something a martial mage right might have. So, uh, you can get advantage on that first attack. If that's your only trick, you're doing that often. Every other turn, maybe. Uh, it'd be more for self-defense. It'd be one of those things where you require the, 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 the note from your principal. A society that had access to a, uh, a system like that uh, can push their economy along pretty quickly. Uh, and they can get a certain portion of those folks that are coming out of the trade schools and coming out of the, the lower education, and they, they seem to have a little knack or they got an interest in this kind of thing. So they, they, they go to the testing like everyone else. And if you if you can't cast a cantrip, it's not like there's an onus. It's not like it's a, you know, well, you can't be a mage, right? It's like, well, okay, we have eliminated one possibility for you. Now now you have all this other stuff in front of you. Would you like to learn to use your hands? Or there's there's a bunch of after-school programs where you can go and pick up a thing or two. Now, other backgrounds. A guild artisan, maybe? Uh, go be that carpenter or that tinkerer that works with the mage, right? Now, you're the person who hires those people out of college or out of high school. Yeah. So, they become kind of an integral part of society. You just expect to see folks like that around. Someone walking down the street, lighting street, all street lamps. Oh, it's a mage right. Hey, just, just your neighbor with a job that involves a little bit of magic. What do they go on to do? That's a background any character class could, could have. Any character could pick that up and say, well, okay, I, I know a cantrip. I know a cantrip. I know a little bit about magic. You could absolutely go on to be a wizard or any other magic using class, and you've got an extra cantrip, a little more knowledge of arcana than other folks. Uh, you, you yeah, started learning earlier. You, you got an edge on this. And wherever you end up in, in this particular society, it's like, well, uh, I could use an extra couple of gold. We got some time. I'm going to go out. I'm going to sign up for the Mage Rights Guild for a night or two and just go and get a little work done. Clear my head out. Uh, your martial classes. Uh, I've, I've got an extra. Uh, I, I picked up True Strike as a Mage Right back in high school. I got this. Uh, I, I know Blade Ward. Uh, I should be able to handle this for a little bit longer than you folks. Uh, I know Shocking Grasp. I was a Mage Right. So, so that person who shouldn't know spell one. Yeah, I do, in fact, have a little bit of talent. Um, not many people know this. I was a mage right in high school. I uh, did, uh, did a little casting of Presto here and there. Worked at a restaurant. Uh, that, that helped me bulk up in bulking season. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's actually... I, I, I'll see if I can write that up more officially looking, put a, put a link to it someplace. Because that works as a, it, it, one thing that struck me is the absence of a background for that. When I read Eberron, because it seemed like such a natural, I wanted to explore that character the moment I saw about it. And that, yeah, I think that kind of works. Thank you for following me along on this particular ramble. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs down. Feedback is feedback. If there's anything else you'd like to hear me talk about, or uh, you have your own experiences with this particular element of, of background, things you'd like to hear me talk about, questions you'd like to hear me answer, please leave me a comment below. I will love getting your comment. You'll love leaving me one. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, why not? My channel is awesome. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you do, you might also want to hit the notification bell so you're alerted when my videos become available. If you would like to contribute to the channel in a more substantial fashion, I invite you to hit me up on my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash scottcorum. Consider donating. Absolutely anything helps allows me to make better videos more often. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'm Scott Corum. This is what has mattered to me. I'll see you next time on the next Matters of the Quorum. Thank <laughs> you.